This case will be called part one of poliomyelitis. You could instantly recognize this tissue as being striated voluntary skeletal muscle. Why? Because you could see striations here. You could see some striations here and here and here and here and here. And in general, the fibers are just kind of laying on top of each other like stacked logs and the nuclei are at the periphery. The only thing that you'll notice here is perhaps the fibers are not as thick as they usually are. And this, because of this, the connective tissue cells between the fibers look a little bit closer to each other. In other words, the nuclei of the cells and the connective tissue cells between the fibers look more numerous because, relatively speaking, the fibers are thinner. This is skeletal muscle atrophy. This is a neurogenic type of atrophy of skeletal muscle in which you have loss in the numbers and in the thicknesses of the skeletal muscle fibers. Here's another area on the exact same piece of tissue in which this uh, phenomenon is even more apparent, in which it looks like the fibers are extremely uh, small uh, and dropped out, and therefore the uh, nuclei and structures within the connective tissue between the fibers appear increased. Notice you can still see striations in here. So in part one of neurogenic atrophy, poliomyelitis, we can see classical neurogenic muscular atrophy in which you have a thinning of skeletal muscle fibers. In part two, we are going to see why. Thank you very much.